crafty friends welcome to another don't regret it use it video and the second in our little mini series of gel plate idea videos yesterday we did some simple blending spattering with water pulling prints and then making a card using one of the prints that we pulled today we're gonna step it up a little bit and do some stenciling with our gel plate before we get started, I wanted to just talk a little bit about colour choice. It's a good idea when layering colours on a gel plate to pick colours that are near each other in the rainbow or on the colour wheel. And that way, when they layer over each other or mix with each other, they won't make a mud or a grey or a neutral. They will enhance each other. So today I'm going to work with an orange and a yellow because they're next to each other on the colour wheel. They're analogous colours and I've got Distress Oxide in Spiced Marmalade and Scattered Straw. Sometimes it can be really overwhelming when using a gel plate because it seems like in one session you can make hundreds and hundreds of prints and then afterwards you're left drowning in all these prints that you don't really know what to do with. So today I'm only going to make a few prints, show you the basics of stenciling with a gel plate and then we're going to make a card. So hopefully it won't be overwhelming and it will show you that you can just get your gel plate out, use it for a few minutes, clean it up, put it away and then get on with your card making. You don't have to end up with a massive pile of prints. So this is just scrap paper that I'm going to roll off my brayer to clean it. And I'm going to start with scattered straw and I'm going to smush it all over my gel plate. So this is going to be the first colour, the bottom colour. And I'm going to smooth that out by running my brayer all over it like that. So that should get rid of any of the sort of squiggly lines from the smushing. And I clean my brayer off like that. Because I'm using colours that are very similar to one another, orange and yellow, I don't need to do any more thorough cleaning than that. They'll mix and look fine. And now I've got a stencil and I'm going to pop that on top like that. So a very, very simple print would be to put a bit of paper on top, hold everything nice and still, and give everything a firm press down so that you get the paper to contact the gel plate, the ink on the gel plate in the gaps between the stencil. And then when you peel that off, you'll get a lovely stenciled image. Now I'm going to take that off. And on here, I've got some ink that was protected by the bits of the stencil. I can lift that off too. So there's the reverse of that one. And I'm just going to get another bit of paper and pick up anything that's left on the plate. So there's a very, very faint impression there. So I don't need to clean it or anything. Now what I can do again is add some more scattered straw. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to roll her to get the ink to smooth out nicely, clean my brayer, get my stencil. I'm not going to clean this off. I'm just going to put it, I think I'll put it inky side up just so that it's the same as last time. The clean part of the stencil is going to be in contact with the gel plate. And now I'm going to get my spiced marmalade and add it to my brayer. And just go over it lots and lots and lots so I get a good coating of the ink on my brayer. And the good thing about Distress Oxides is they show up really well on dark colours. So you can see when you do this if you've got enough ink on your dark brayer. It depends what colour your brayer is, obviously. <laughs> and then very carefully, so as not to shift the stencil... I'm going to roll it over so this orange paint should go into the gaps. I'll go over that a few times. Next I'm going to take 
my stencil off, take a clean piece of paper, press it down, and the ink that was underneath the stencil should just be scattered straw. And the bits in the holes in the stencil should be scattered straw mixed with spiced marmalade. So I'm giving that a good press down and some time to transfer. And now I can peel it back up. And now I've got the scattered straw crisscross pattern with orange in the middle. I'm going to pop that back on there like that. Press that down just to see what we get. Take that off, pop that on there and pick up what's left. And we got some orange lines again. And that's all I'm going to do today. I'm just going to clean my gel plate with a baby wipe and a microfiber cloth and pop it back in its packaging because I have enough bits of paper from one little session. What was that? About five minutes or so. Got couple of those and that and that and the bit that I rolled my bray rough onto which is more than enough to make a card two or three. Today's card is going to be four by six inches and I've cut a panel of smooth white cardstock to be exactly the same size as the front of my card and I'm going to use this lacy scalloped border die to cut a nice wavy border so there we have our die cut panel. It's got some nice embossed and dotty detail there. And what I'd like to do is use this one as a fairly light background, just poking out from behind it. To separate the two layers, I'm going to use some foam tape. I want to make sure my trellis design is square on my card base, I think. So I'm gonna cut a panel from there. And I've put tape runner on the back because this is quite a thin bit of card or paper and I don't want it to go wobbly or warp with liquid glue. To get this lined up nicely I've got my scoreboard here and I can use it to get this corner right and that should make everything else right there so that's nice and simple i want to create a focal point on my card round about here and i'm going to use this stitch square die to cut a bit from this that will kind of hover there and i'm just gonna cut this down a bit because this is as i say thin and i want to make it a bit more sturdy so I'll add some stick glue to the back of this print and put it on a bit of scrap white card. So now this is a lot more sturdy. I'm going to line up my square. So I've got one of these squares as a diamond in the middle. So it's roughly central. So I've added a bit of foam tape to one half of my square and some glue to the other half so that I can position this roughly about there. I want to create a flower to put on my little focal point there. And I've got this, this is the bit that I cleaned my brayer off on. And I'm just gonna blend over some warm lipstick, Distress Oxide. To bring in another colour, it's still an analogous colour because it's a pinky ready colour which is near orange on the colour wheel. So you can treat your Distress Oxide gel prints like you would any Distress Oxide blended panel. You can add colour, you can lift colour, that kind of thing. Speaking of lifting colour, I'm just going to spritz on a little bit of water and lift that off. And that just gives it a bit of texture and I'll give that a blast with my hairdryer. Now I'm going to cut I think three and we'll see how we get on with that. And I'm going to take this, the bit that I didn't put one lipstick on, and cut three flower centres. 
So I put my petals on my gel plate because you can use them a bit like grip mats. They do hold things still. Be careful though not to use any sharp implements near your gel plate because if you do scratch the surface or poke a hole in the surface at all, it will show up on your prints. So I'm gonna use the rounded end of my tweezers and just add a little bit of worn lipstick with a finger dobber. Actually, I don't even need to use my tweezers. It's holding them nice and still. Uh, just to add a little bit of extra dimension, I think, with a bit of darker or more saturated color around the outside. And I'm gonna pop these in a bit of foam and push down in the middle to make them spring up a bit. To assemble my flowers, that's far too much. Take, take some of the glue off and add it here and add it here. Here we go. Get my tweezers and assemble my flowers and I cut three of the flower centers so I'll just give those a little dip in the glue I also cut some of the little leaves out of cardstock that I'd coloured with bundled sage. So now I can add my flowers to my card. Just thinking three here, like this. So we can still see our little square here and I've got a sentiment to add there. So I'm thinking an arrangement like this. Get my glue, stick my flowers down. And interlock a bit so that they look like they're clustered together. This is the sentiment I'm going to use, just a pre-printed and pre-cut happy birthday and that can go on there, nestled amongst the flowers and on the little landing spot. And then we've got our green leaves which we can just poke under the flowers. Just give them a little bit of glue. As a finishing touch, I'm adding a white Nouveau drop into the centre of each flower. Now this will absorb the colour from the paper, the ink underneath it and will change colour. So it will be a pinky yellowy colour, which will work really nicely for these flowers. If you wanted to keep them white, then you'd need to use something like an enamel dot or maybe a little pearl. So there we go, one clean and simple happy birthday card made from gel prints that we did with Distress Oxides and stenciling and cleaning off our brayer. And this is what we've got left so we can make more. This might be a good way of batching some cards if you need to make multiples of the same card or similar cards. But it's not an overwhelming amount of prints left to put in our pouch of pretties or however you store your leftovers. Right, I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas on what you can do with your gel plate. If you want to watch the rest of this series, do check out the description below the video or beside the video, depending on whatever device you're using, there will be a link to the playlist there. Right, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.